Since the implementation of the sequester, over 800,000 federal workers have been furloughed, numerous government agencies have been shuttered, and with a budget battle looming in the fall and rhetoric on the Hill leading up there, there seems to be no end in sight for the mass budget cut. So joining me today to discuss this is the always outspoken person, Mark Levine, host of The Inside Scoop. Mark, thanks for stopping by. Good to be here as always. Yeah, so let's talk about this. I mean, the results of a recent Gallup poll show that 54% of Americans claim they didn't know enough about the sequester. And could you say exactly what is going on with it? What, what's up with the sequester deal? Uh, basically, what the sequester is doing is it's sacrificing our long-term needs for short-term gains. So the Republicans want to say they've cut the deficit. So what right. are they cutting? They're cutting fixing bridges that can collapse. They're cutting building airports. They're cutting building high-speed trains. In every European capital, London, Paris, Rome, you go there, you could take a train right from the airport to the heart of the business center. Not in New York, not in Los Angeles. We have 20th century technology. We need 20 first and that's the stuff that the Republicans want to cut. So how are we going to get there? How are we going to get to this 21st century technology uh, with all these looming budget cuts? Well, we need to end the budget cuts. We, we need a new New <laughs> More Deal. More money? Uh, absolutely. We need a new New Deal. Okay, Look, so tell me about the new New Deal. The new New Deal is this. Right now, interest rates are the lowest they've been forever. They're close to zero nice. and the lowest they're going to be in a long time, yes. thanks to the Federal Reserve. Yes. Absolutely. Unemployment is still relatively high. Wages are low and dropping. Now's a great time to take American workers and put them to work. Do what we did in the 1930s. Build those great bridges that still exist around Washington, D.C. and help lead us to the 21st century. Much better now than later when the economy is strong and it costs much more to hire these workers. So that's, a, that's an interesting uh, point that you make about interest rates. Isn't the very fact that we're going to have to borrow so much money because of uh, this uh, infrastructure spending going to raise rates themselves? Well, interest rates are cheap now, and the Federal Reserve can keep them cheap, as you know, by, by, by printing money or by quantitative easing. Look, Europe has tried the alternative. They've tried austerity. They've tried exactly what the House Republicans want to do. And look at Great Britain. It hasn't worked. I think they've had a triple dip recession right now. Yes. There's a time to spend and a time to save. Now's the time to spend. Okay. According to OECD statistics, the United States spends 3.3% of its GDP on infrastructure investments, and the European Union is only 3.1%. Why is there this disparity between what we're doing and this gets back to the question of infrastructure spending why are we not doing it now which I believe is your opinion well, that it should be done. I think it should be done now. Remember, Europe is a lot physically smaller than the United States, particularly Western Europe and the OECD countries. We have a lot to spend. We have a lot of space to cover. We have a lot of needs. We have a growing population. We have to prepare for the future. This idea that we're going to save money by not retrofitting bridges, then when the bridge collapses, it costs a lot more to, to fix it, plus, of course, the loss of lives. It, we're really being penny-wise, pound foolish. Okay, but we have an unemployment process. We have an un unemployment problem here. A lot of workers are losing their jobs and we actually have 4.8 million US workers who have access to classified information what if they lose their jobs I mean is this a security risk I don't think this is about a security risk, but it is about employing more Americans. No question about it. It's a jobs program. Look, President Obama has been trying to do this since his first term. Why is Republicans, he well, because Republicans are staying in his way. The House Republicans, the gridlock that everybody hates in Congress is caused entirely by the House Republicans who've drawn the district lines to protect their districts, even though the majority of Americans voted for Democrats back in the last election. Okay, so let's take this over across the seas to China. Like, what, do, what is the situation in China, and are there any parallels with what's going on there? Because they spent a lot of money building up these uh, Potemkin villages that are basically, uh, you know, bridges to nowhere, but entire cities. Is, I mean, isn't the same thing going to happen here if we just start spending money recklessly? Well, I'm not arguing that we spend money recklessly. I'm not arguing <laughs> that we create massive uh, towns where no one lives. Right. I'm not arguing that we build any buildings at all. But fixing bridges, building airports, making our trains safer. We've learned in Spain that uh, sometimes you need safer trains. Yeah, we, these we are, see that video. <laughs> these are things that we need to do and that everyone agrees we need to do. And the idea of the Republicans are going to save a little bit of money now. Look, the deficit has been cut under President Obama from George W. Bush's last year dramatically, uh, almost in half. He's done a terrific job. We now need to spend the money to protect against unemployment and really to protect our infrastructure for the future. Well, the problem is, I mean, the deficit ballooned when we had this financial panic of 2008. Right. What, I, if we're going to go back into that situation, and a lot of people say that we might, you know, emerge into another financial panic, aren't we going to see the same thing happen again? Aren't we just going to repeat history? The financial panic 
was caused by Wall Street. Wall Street gambling without regulation. Because of Dodd-Frank, because of these changed? kinds of... Well, the whole purpose of Dodd-Frank and bills like that is to restrict Wall Street regulation. Now, would I regulate Wall Street more? You betcha. I certainly would. The Republicans are against that. But that's the thing that can get us into a massive recession, not a little more government spending on infrastructure. And so your thoughts on the Federal Reserve is they're just keeping interest rates artificially low and they really don't have a hand in any of this? I mean, what happens if they decide to bail out Wall Street again? Isn't this setting another precedent? We should not bail out Wall Street again. Okay. The Federal Reserve is keeping artificially low interest rates, but that's okay because in the inflation rate is artificially low. If inflation starts kicking up to 2 3 4%, I'll be against quantitative easing. Okay. Right now, unemployment's more of a problem than, in than inflation, so that's why the Federal Reserve is doing what they're doing. Mark Levine, thank you so much for joining me. Always a pleasure, Bob. Yes.